So this problem says how much heat energy is required in kilojoules to raise the temperature of 12 grams of water from 40 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius. And so we're of course going to use our equation Q equals M times C times delta T. And then of course delta T is equal to the final temperature minus the initial temperature. Okay, so the hardest part of these heat problems is just figuring out what pieces of information we have and what it is that we are looking for. And so we first, let's try and figure out how much, we're, what we're looking for. So it says how much, so that's definitely what we're looking for, and it says heat energy. And we know that heat energy is Q. We use a Q to represent heat energy. So we are solving for Q in this situation. So we don't need to rearrange our equation. We just need to substitute in the mass, the specific heat, and the change in temperature to find our value for Q. So let's find those other variables. Um, so let's see, required in kilojoules to raise the temperature of 12 grams, so grams, that would be our mass, so our value of M, uh, from 40 degrees, so from, that means that was our initial temperature, so our T initial, uh, to 70, so our T finals right there. So let's first solve for delta T. Our T final is 70 degrees Celsius minus our T initial, which is 40 degrees Celsius, and that equals delta T. Um, so 70 minus 40, of course, is 30 degrees Celsius. Okay, so now we have our delta T equals 30 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in, 30 degrees Celsius. Okay, uh, and we have our mass, 12 grams. So all that's left is we need our specific heat, our value of C. Um, and of course, a specific heat of liquid water is the specific heat that you are supposed to memorize, 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius, but it is given in the hint of this problem. The specific heat of liquid water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. So that's our value for C. 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Barely fits in there. Okay, so now we need to do some math and we need to take a look at our units. So I always like to do units first, so our value of Q, figure out what units that's going to have. So we have grams here, and then we have grams in the denominator of our unit for specific heat. So those grams are gonna cancel out. And then we have degrees Celsius in the denominator, so that will cancel with the degrees Celsius in our temperature change. And we're just going to be left with joules as our final unit, which does make sense because uh, that is a unit of energy, the joule. So I'm going to go ahead and put joules as my final unit in this problem. And now we just need to use calculator to multiply our numbers together. All of this is multiplication, that makes it nice and easy. So let's do 12 times 4.184 times 30. And I got 1506.24. 1506.24. Uh, and that value is in joules, as we said. So last one, at least, we need to look and make sure that our value is in the correct unit. And our problem says how much heat energy is required in kilojoules. So we don't want our final answer to be in joules. We need to convert to kilojoules. And we can do this just using some dimensional analysis. So if we want joules to cancel, that unit needs to go on the bottom. And we want to convert to kilojoules. So this is a metric unit conversion. Um, I'm going to start by putting my starting value over 1, just to remind us that it's up in the numerator, and it's a joules to kilojoules conversion. Uh, we need to figure out which one is our bigger unit, and if, uh, in case you've forgotten, we would use King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk, uh, space, space, micro, space, space, nano, but we won't need those parts. Uh, we have a kilo unit, and then joule is the base unit. Um, so, of course, our bigger unit is the kilo unit, so we're going to put a 1 there, and we just need to figure out how many joules are in a kilojoule, and we do that by counting the steps. So 1, 
two, three steps, so we put a one with three zeros. A thousand joules in one kilojoule. So basically all we end up doing is doing our answer in joules divided by a thousand to get our answer to kilojoules. Joules cancel, and then we'll do 1506.24 divided by a thousand, and of course you could just move the decimal point three times and get 1.5 zero six two four but I'm not going to hold on to all those decimal places I am going to round my final answer let's take a look at significant figures um, our problem actually only has one sig fig one sig fig two sig figs so if, if we were rounding two correct sig figs then we would round to uh, two kilojoules but I'm actually going to keep one decimal place here, um, so 1.5 kilojoules might be my final answer. It seems more reasonable to me, um, but of course if you were following correct significant figure rules it would be rounded to 2 kilojoules here, just one significant figure.